Well, welcome to another tutorial. In this case, it's going to be a computer one of using programs. And in this one, we're going to be doing some video restoration. I had this little project where I had to rescue someone's video off a really old v um, beta tape. And as you can see, we're going to get a whole bunch of glitches and stuff that we need to fix up in different places. Sometimes filters can get rid of noise in a few of those lines, but not always. Sometimes if you've got a situation where you've got a one frame glitch, like that one there, you can go back a frame or forward a frame and export the previous frame and then import it again. And here it is. Import it and then put it right there and you'll notice it'll go there. On top of the glitch flame, it'll freeze frame for one or so. Oops, turn it on first, you'll see without it. It'll freeze, freeze, and then you can shorten it up so that basically you can put a patch of a previous frame over it. And sometimes it's preferable for it to freeze for a frame that nobody really notices compared to the big flash that suddenly happens like that you can it's better to freeze frame it and then move on one however if you've got more time that's an easy way of doing it but if you've got more time and you've got a lot of these little ones either tape dropouts or lines like this they're disturbing in it you don't want to be freeze framing all over the show and sometimes you've got consecutive frames where every single frame's got one but not in the same place. So what we can do is export all of those frames and work on them and touch them up and I'm going to use a free program called GIMP but in the meantime I'm going to go export to an image sequence, export to media to an image sequence and stick it in a folder and I'm going to make sure that it's exported as a sequence so it's going to number it properly and then export it and it will export it for me. In the meantime I'm going to go and open GIMP which is G-I-M-P the GIMP 2.8 at the moment of doing this tutorial and it's a free program open source so it costs you nothing and it's a very useful and powerful tool. You can either start a new project with the same dimensions as your video project in this case 720 by 480 or you can just open up one of the frames to give you this one here then you can open file open as layers then go and find on your F drive I think it is go to your first picture which is here and then go select it as your number one down to the bottom and shift click to select the whole lot, open them and GIMP will load each of those pictures which are a frame per picture obviously in your image sequence and put each image onto a layer of its own so that you can work on the video footage as if it was a multi-layered image. It'll take a while for as many as you're going to have and in this case we'll have several hundred frames that means several hundred layers. And in this case we have 211 layers because there were 211 images which were 211 frames of your video. But just don't be daunted by that. It is a single image with layers. Just treat it as a video with frames. Now because there's a lot of them to do I would suggest we first save it but you need to save as so now with the XCF extension, you can that is the native GIMP extension so that it will save all those layers together. And I'm going to navigate to the directory where I'm going to put my project and then highlight that and put the name in here. So Fred, for example, XCF and then save that. And it will save all of those layers so that you can come back to the project and work on it in little bits and pieces if you have to. So now to the project. What we're going to do is we have our toolbox there open. We have our tool options and our layers over here which you can find through Windows 
dockable dialogues and open in those from there if you accidentally close them by some mistake. Now here we can now start looking at the frames and say that one looks pretty clean to me so let's just close it off and march back through the footage until you find one that glitches. Now there was one right there. What we can do, there are several different things. Let's go to the worst one which was this one here. First we can work on it so we highlight it. We need to have a transparency layer so or an alpha channel so right click on it the menu comes up and add alpha channel. That will give us transparency. You'll notice it's got transparency because it's a lighter writing and not bold like that. That's un alphaed and that is with an alpha channel. So we go back to there. That means we can now use our tools to, in this case, cut out with our box here and just delete that. And you'll notice that the frame underneath it is going to show through. So that's nice for big block areas. If we find that you can see the edge of that, we can go to our tool parameters and turn feathering on and say gave it 10 or 20 um, frames of feathering. And so that when we come he to here, uh, we'll do it over this side, it will make it more feathered out and so it will feather those edges there. Let's try that one. Yep. Now where it gets a little finer like a line, you can either just go a fine line like that and delete it, or you can use something like, um, you can use this tool here to go around things like around his head for example, and then delete, and you'll notice his head is now starting there, so to undo is Control Z will undo it. Let's just get rid of that tool. Another one is to then just use your eraser. You can make it any size you want with your parameters here. And here we can just go quietly and carefully painting out any glitches that we want to. And we can be a little bit more selective and a little bit finer so that if you have to work around inconsistencies on the frame below, you can do it that way. Also, if you find that the one, the frame below is not going to work for you because it's also got a glitch, well you can just keep on going down until you find a frame that is going to work for you. You can also, apart from that, you'll find that it's so glitchy that you haven't got a clean frame to work with and a static background, so you may have to start using the clone tool, which is this one here, this rubber stamp one. You can, if you want to, uh, go from something in the same photo, like this piece of wall here, maybe there's a line across here, for example if I draw one you go, ah, there's a horrible line, a horrible glitch there, so I can get my clone tool here, I can go in the same photo fairly close for example on this wall, hold down the shift and cl right cl uh, left click to set my position and then I can then clone another piece of the paint of the photo into it to get rid of that. Now if you find that that's not working for you, you can for example where's a glitch that I need to get rid of? Somewhere down here. Oh we're on here. We can then go to another frame say down here and say oh there's a nice piece here and we can I want to replace her eye because it's got a blob on it or something. So I select where I want to clone from and go back to where I want to clone to and then I can then clone from one layer to another layer. In this case it's not working but that's the theory. You can clone from one layer to another layer. Sometimes you can find one below that you want to clone from or even above that you can clone from. Control Z undoes that. Okay, so those are your tools. You can use your boxes with feathering, your one here. Um, you can also spray paint, for example, if I find that it might be quicker. Say his head is, I don't like his head around here. So <clears throat> I mask it and then select the color with my eyedropper next to his head and then with the spray painter I can then spray his that glitch of the shape of his head out, for example. Control Z because I don't want to. Now, once we've finished that, we can then highlight it, 
find out what no number it is. It's 1204. Once that frame is now fixed up, I can go to File, Export. We don't want to save as, we want to export the actual frame. So we can just zoom down to 1204 there, or we can just type it up near 1204. 1204, and it's a JPEG, so there we are, 1204. And the export, we can either click the buttons, or we can just go Enter, 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 and it will save that frame back to that file. Then just keep on going down, fixing up those glitches. All right, let's. We're going to now get rid of just the section where those two major glitches were. Now we have this part, which is also not very nice. Let's select the whole thing, and we don't have an alpha channel because it's gone away. But you can see the feathering. So Control Z to back there and right click alpha channel and then we can have an alpha channel to get rid of it. We notice that the frame below has also got a glitch so let's go to the frame even below that and it looks fairly reasonable to me. So let's save that one as 1204 export 1204 that's the one we were export replace Enter will do fine. Right, that one's cleaned up. Now we have frame 1203. So let's give it an alpha channel, which it already has. Then we can select the one underneath and this piece here as well. And she also has a little glitch on her face. So let's just get our eraser and get rid of that little spot. And there we are. We've taken the color of her underneath. So that frame looks clean enough. And that is 1203. File, export, 1203.jpg. Enter, enter, enter. And that saves a whole lot. Now, once you've gone through your whole bit of footage, come back, and if you want to occasionally save the project so you can go and have a cup of coffee or go to the supermarket or something, then come back and attack it another day. So once you've got through that and you've fixed that image sequence, you can now bring it back into your um, into your project. And the image sequence there in Adobe Premiere, you just select the first one click the numbered stills and then open that and it will open it as a actual video clip. So you're going to put it on top of there and you'll notice now those nasty, that big nasty ones with the two glitches down the bottom there, I think it is, if we, there we go, there's that, the glitches that we've just fixed are now fine and dandy. It's a little, there it is you see, nice and fixed. It's a little bit laborious, but it can be done. And there we are with free GIMP video restoration. It's very tedious, but if someone's paying you to do it, it is possible to do.